Hi everybody, Lawrence here. Today we're going to talk about this item. It is called Papillon de Metz. What is Papillon de Metz, you ask? Good question. Stay tuned for this episode of... Papillon de Metz happened basically in the siege of Metz. Let's go back a little bit in time in, in history to the Franco-Prussian War of 1870. Much of Europe was in the height of their national, uh, nationalism. Uh, Italy in 1860, 1861, 62 had already begun to become the Kingdom of Italy. Lombardy Venetia was one of the last places to fall into the Kingdom of Italy. In 1859, Austria had to cede uh, Lombardy Venetia, Venetia to the Emperor, Emperor of France, Napoleon III, who then gave it to uh, the Kingdom of Italy and it became a part of the Kingdom of Italy. In 1866, there was a massive uh, Prussian Austrian war. Now, they were both German speaking, and basically Bismarck wanted to take uh, the whole of Austria under, under its wing, and there was a war and Austria lost and pieces began to fall into place and once Austria lost and there were more and more German speaking areas uh, France felt that it was losing its place as the center of Europe. Otto Bismarck, the Chancellor of Prussia uh, forced, uh, forced France into declaring war on it in 1870 because the Prussian Chancellor wanted to convince four states who had not yet joined the, the Confederation to become a member. States such as um, Baden, Bavaria, Württemberg and another one. Esse Darmstadt. Uh, France did declare war on, on Prussia. And as you all know, it's a part of history, uh, there was a big war. And as part of the war, Paris was sieged, and we won't go into that because it's a different subject entirely. Marshal Bazaine of, of a part of the French army, um, after, his, after defeat in August of 1870, he retreated to a fortress known as Metz. He thought that, that he could, that he could uh, hold out for more time. The French army of, of the Rhine, uh, led by Marshal Bazaine, was defeated at the battle on the 18th of August 1870 and they retreated to the fortress of, of Metz and they thought that they could hold that could hold out. However, unfortunately for them, being a fortress, the Prussian army managed to totally surround the fortress. The French actually believed that they could hold out for more, over four months, but the calculations were incorrect because all of a sudden there were about 170,000 soldiers in that fortress and really there was not enough to eat or drink. Despite their calculations, um, they worked out that they only had provisions for 14 days, two weeks. Here we have a fortress running out of, packed with soldiers running out of food and they need to get food. Now, how do you get a message out? The, <clears throat> a person by, by the name of um, Dr. Papillon, and there are actually no photos of Dr. Papillon on the, on the, on the net, not that I could find, shouldn't we say, so I represent him by a butterfly, because basically uh, Papillon is a butterfly in French. Who's the most famous Papillon that we know? The movie called Papillon. Anyway, Major Papillon turned to his friend, uh, a pharmacist, uh, Major Dr. Major Dr. Julien Janel, and there are photos of him, and said and suggested the idea of sending hot air balloons. Only you. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Janel actually liked that idea, and he took the idea to uh, the head of the fortress, which in those days was Marshal Bazaine, because he was the he was the leading uh, commander there, and he basically thought it was a silly idea, but he gave them money to continue this. And frankly, that is the end of uh, Dr. Papillon's 
uh, influence in this entire saga. Janelle, Dr. Janelle, being a pharmacist, he created hot air balloons. And they put in small messages into these hot air balloons and started sending them into the air. And they became little butterflies. Maybe that's where they got the, got the name from, I don't know. The initial balloons were known as the pharmacist balloons because Janelle was a pharmacist. On the 5th of the September 1872 to about the 15th of, uh, 15th of September, uh, Dr. Janelle sent up 1,404 balloons into the air. Not all of them arrived, few of them arrived, but some did. Apparently, they carried about, all these 14 balloons carried about 3,000 letters. You send, now, you send these, uh, these balloons up into the air and they float and float and float and whatever. And uh, how do you stop them? How do you stop these little pieces of paper from getting wet? Well, apparently they coated both sides of the small piece of paper with varnish in order to stop it, uh, to, to coat them from water, for example, rain, whatever. These seven, seven of the 14 initial balloons made it to their destination. From one source that I saw, less than 20 of these letters are currently known. Marshall Bazin felt that this had promise. So he decided to take it away from the pharmacists and give it to one of his military wing, the Artillery and Engineering Application School. And that was the, the they decided to continue the work, but they, they decided that the letters were to be written on onion skin paper and they were to be measured, everyone, exactly 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters. In other words, 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters. And they sent these up in the air and these letters became known as the balloons of the School of Military and Engineering. Mm -hmm. They were sent up from the 16th of September to the 2nd of October. Each of these balloons carried thousands of these little butterflies as it became known. And once again, I don't know if the name was Butterfly because they fluttered in the wind or else it was because of Dr. Papillon. Now these, these letters by the School of Engineering, of Military and Engineering, uh, they were basically for, uh, supposed to be for the people and the people to send message, messages to their family, but only personal messages. Let me read you one kind of message. My dear friend, I am writing to let you know that I am well. I intend to return from the war safe and sound. My compliments to your wife. Marshal Bazin believed that the Prussians had managed to capture some of these letters and discontinued their use on October 3rd. Today, unfortunately, despite them being thousands and thousands and thousands of letters sent, apparently, according to Eva Dantelio, only about less than 150 are currently known. That's not very much. By October 20th, the food provisions of the fortress were running out and uh, they needed to get food. How, what kind of food did they start eating? Of course, horses. Uh, the host population of the fortress dropped considerably. They had to get food somehow. They didn't have enough food to provide for the soldiers and for the animals. On the 27th of October, and uh, Marshal Bazin eventually had to surrender to Prussian forces. His people were starving and he had no choice. As a result of this uh, war, uh, shortly afterwards, the four nations, the four states became a member, a, a part of, uh, the King of, of Prussia and the Confederation of German States and modern day Germany was born. So in essence, it was successful. Anyway, friends, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned. See you next time. Bye.